The Bible is a collection of many ancient Israelite scrolls and together they are telling one unified story. Now, if you look at the second scroll, Exodus, you will find two important sentences. They are actually so important that they are referenced and re-quoted over 20 more times within the Bible itself. That must be important. What does it say? Yehovah, Yehovah, a God compassionate and gracious, slow to anchor, overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness. I can see why it's repeated so often. These attributes of God are really lovely. And the statement goes on. He maintains loyal love for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin. Yet, he won't declare innocent the guilty. He will bring the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and grandchildren to the third and the fourth. Okay, hold on. This last part takes a bit of a turn. We are first talking about God's love and suddenly it's about this judgment on grandkids. So is God merciful or vengeful? Yeah, great question, right? Let's see these words in a large context by looking at something important in Genesis, the first scroll of the Bible. There, God chooses one family, the Israelites, from among the nations, and he promises that he is going to rescue the whole world through this family somehow. And Genesis ends with the family of Abraham in Egypt. Then the book of Exodus begins, and this book has two large moments. Right. Okay. This first moment of Exodus, God rescues Israel from slavery in Egypt. And in the second moment, God leads them to Mount Sinai where they camp out for a year. And God invites this whole nation into a partnership called a covenant so that they can be shaped by his values and character and represent God to all the other nations. Exactly. Now, the whole Mount Sinai moment in Exodus can be broken up into four literary units. First, there is the actual ceremony where the Israelites agree to be God's partners and God sets up the terms of the relationship starting with the Ten Commandments. The first two are, don't give your allegiance to other gods and don't make any idol images of God. Seems simple enough. After that, God shows Moses detailed blueprints for building this sacred home so that God can come and live among them. Right. And then comes a really long narrative about the building of that sacred home. But you miss something. Right in between these sections is a story that has a description about God's character. This story begins with the Moses going up on the mountain, writing down the partner agreement as the Israelites are at the base of the mountain, violating the first two commands. That's ridiculous, no? They are breaking the covenant vows while the ceremony is still going on. Yes, and so God is hurt and angry. And he wants Moses that this betrayal will keep on happening. God is ready to call it quits. But what about his promise to rescue, rescue the world through them? But... Uh, exactly, this is what Moses brings up. And so what is God going to do? Should he, he end the partnership, which will be fair? Or will he be faithful to his promise to Abraham and show the mercy? Yeah, exactly. Now look back at the words that we began with. And you will see that about this very tension between God's mercy and his justice. Okay, so the statement opens like this. A God compassionate and gracious. In Hebrew, this line has three words that rhyme, El Rakum Vekanu, and the line overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness matches the first, as it also has three Hebrew words, Rab Kesad Vimat. Each of these lines have two attributes of God, and they surround a fifth attribute that God is slow to anger. Right. And now that's the first half of the description of God. Then comes the second half. God maintains loyal love for thousands. And how he is going to remain loyal to people who keep rebelling against him by forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin. But God's forgiveness don't mean people can just do whatever they want. God's mercy is balanced in what follows, yet he won't declare innocent the guilty. He'll bring the iniquities of the father upon the children and grandchildren to the third and the fourth. The third and the fourth? What? 
Well, it's referring to generations of people who repeat their ancestors' rebellion against God. They'll get what they deserve. But notice, this small number of generations contrasts that massive number up above God's loyal love to thousands. And then check this out. God's forgiveness of iniquity in this line is contrasted with his justice on iniquity in this, in this line. Okay, and all those lines are surrounding a central line here about God's justice. He will not declare innocent the guilty. So while God is slow to anger, he is also just. This is the tension that these two sentences are exploring. How does a faithful and loyal God deal with such a rebellious people? This is the challenge God faces in this story and it's the same challenge he faces in the whole biblical story as he works to rescue the world through this family. With that in mind, we can take a closer look at these five attributes that God declares about himself to Moses. A God compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, overflowing in loyal love and faithfulness. And we'll see how each one leads us deeper into the character of God and into the story of the Bible. Thank you.